Hey folks, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my shop. Here's my Allen Mogul, my big locomotive. And if you've been following along, you'll know I'm working on an LBSC Titch, a little three and a half inch gauge locomotive. Made some good progress this, this week with the eccentrics and the, um, the valving, basically the uh, pieces that you see here. If you'll follow along with me, this should be about a 20, 25 minute video, I suppose got a, uh, probably 25 or 30 little segments that show the machining of these valve parts. So it's pretty important stuff if you're building a locomotive like this, anything like this that has the slip eccentrics. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. Please give me a thumbs up, ask questions if you have, and um, please help pass the word. I am trying to grow the channel. Thank you. Okay, now it's time to machine the eccentric straps. For the eccentric lugs that we made. Oh, well, they're actually, <laughs> I got them soaking in a cleaning solution to get that crazy glue off of them. But anyway, I've, I've gone out here. It's a beautiful day. I have the day off today. It's a holiday. So, um, beautiful day in October. And I've filed the castings lightly but thoroughly. I've gotten rid of all the casting flash and basically flattened them out. I've also been playing with a four jaw chuck setups for the actual machining but the first things I have to do after filing well point this out because I'm having to deal with um, ordering from England to get these parts I thought you know heaven forbid if I ruin one I've got some 3 16 inch brass which um, would be a, a uh, possible substitute for these parts because the finished size is 3 16 of an inch so what I did was I traced out the parts on the 3 16 inch brass just as a backup before I start machining them. And then I've, I've blued and marked and I'm getting ready to center pop the places where the holes will be drilled. There we go, you can see them pretty clearly there. Plan is to drill the, using a tapping size drill for the th number 348 screws that I have. And then I'll mark these castings and cut them in half with a hacksaw and either file or mill the sides flat, screw them together, and then I can put them in the four jaw and machine them to fit the eccentrics. Then after that, probably not today, but later on this week, mill the slot, drill the holes for the strap, the connecting rod type strap, which I'll make out of this half inch by eighth inch steel and that's what it'll take. So I'll bring you along for the rest of the journey here. Center pops and drills. I'm lining up the first of them using my um, pointer to get the hole exactly right. All right. Here we go with the holes are drilled. The halves are marked out. I, I use this, the hole itself, the oval, it's three quarters of an inch. So I marked along the lines and my idea is it's not original. I found this online, a guy making a titch, and he put the halves in his vise and sawed them like this. I think I'm going to try this, but I'm going to try it on something, a practice thing first, just to perfect my technique with my hacksaw. I'm glad I did a test, and I got a nice, nice finish there. I just tried this little piece of steel, strap steel, but I did put a new blade on my hacksaw, and it made all the difference. So let's move onward with cutting the frames of the eccentrics in half. Okay, here goes the first one. What I did, if you can see this, I set the scribe lines just above the level of the vice jaws. So I'll slice those off now and see how it goes. Well, that took about 30 seconds. As you can see, I mean, that is a very clean cut. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need to mill those. I'll just file it like it says in the book, you know, just dress those with the file and then tap the bottom ones <clears throat> while I'm here and elongate the big ones, or, or excuse me, not elongate, but drill out the big ones for the clearance on the 348. Sweet. I'm going to use the universal pillar tool to enlarge the holes in the caps there. Uh, what I've got now, I've got the number 37 drill that I used for the, or <clears throat> excuse me, the number 47 drill, which was the tap hole size, just to do the alignment and then I'll replace it with the number 47 for my clearance and then drill this. I won't, 
I'm not going to video the drilling because <clears throat> I'm holding the the uh, camera with one hand. I am happy with the with the pillar tool overall. I, I would, you know, and I'm delighted that my little five dollar sewing machine motor works. Uh, I am thinking about replacing that motor with something a little different, something a little bit more like a Sureline. But for now, this will get the job done. And here I am tapping the bottom halves with my 348 tap. I'm just tapping them by hand in place in the vise that I used to cut them off. Uh, it was just as easy to, to use this as anything else and just go gently and make sure it's all properly vertical. I got the first of the eccentric straps. It's all screwed together and set up in the little four jaw chuck that I use that goes with the 5C collar holder. Got a couple of standoffs giving me about 3 sixteenths or a little bit more more than that and it's sticking out you know good almost an eighth of an inch I guess there. So the idea is to face and bore. I've, I used my uh, tailstock to line it up as good as I could and then I've done the set off. I'm gonna take the I've tightened it down now. I'm gonna take the the straps out and we'll see how how good a job I got it centered. It's a little tricky with a casting like this obviously but I do want to get it centered as good as I can before I start boring. Okay I'll just remove the standoffs and run it. You can see a little bit of wobble but that's not a perfect circle and if you run it this way let me do that See, it's pretty flat, pretty flush. It's tight, so I think we're ready to go. All right, we're right in the middle of the second pass. It took 10 thou off. The 5 thou on the first one cleaned it up nicely. Everything stayed in place, so taking 10 thou off on this pass. All right, success. Got a nice shake-free fit here on this first one. And now it's just time to take it out, reverse it, and face off the other side and get to the right thickness. If you can see, I don't know if this will show up on camera, but there is a little line in there where I stopped and checked the diameter, the inside diameter, but it fits good, so I'm happy. All right, well, it's the end of a beautiful day. I've been out here all day, basically a short break for lunch, but it's taken me, I hate to say the number of hours, but it has been enjoyable. Working on these, I, you can see, and it's, it might be hard to read, but I stamped them because I made the pairs to fit. Um, let's see if I can get a focus on I stamped a 2 on this. There you go. Little number 2 with my little 1 16th inch number stamps. So in case I take them apart, I'll know which one goes with which. So I guess tonight I'll just glue in the uh, Loctite in the, um, the pins. I'm glad I didn't have that done because it really facilitated testing the fit of these uh, eccentric pins in the straps as I was machining them and the work you know the lathe worked out good using the four jaw so no complaints there pretty excited about all the progress so far I still need to with these I need to drill a little oil cup and a passageway and then I need of course to, to um, fabricate the eccentric straps on the end that will connect to the valve linkages and for that it just calls for eighth inch steel so I was going to use this piece of scraps of eighth inch hot rolled steel I've got. I may make up a jig for the machining of this and um, that, would, that would facilitate the setting of the distance for the, the you know the end of it but I haven't figured that out yet. I'll, uh, I'll bring you back and show you that piece. Later. There's my setup for the oil cups. I'm, I used a 332nd inch end mill and made a little pocket and then I used a number 47 drill bit to come down and make the oil passage for the eccentric strap. I did it for both of them now. Here I am milling the second slot inside the uh, eccentric strap. Being real careful. I'm only taking 25 thou at a time. I plan on for sure silver soldering and maybe fastening them with some pins. Showing a little handy jig I made here for the fastening the eccentric straps. What I did is kind of self explanatory. I actually took my brake jig that I had created for the Allen Mogul and I turned a piece of aluminum 
that's the same as the inside diameter of the eccentric straps here. So it's a nice snug fit there. And that's it's, so it's bolted down, and then I've, I've I've put a dab of crazy glue on the little eccentric rods to be, so they'll hold together long enough for me to drill and tap them. And what I'm doing is here's my lineup of equipment. I'm using a 55 a center drill, 55 drill, and then a zero 80 thread per inch tap for these little tiny screws, 080 screws. And the idea, once I get that done, now I'll have a good solid connection that can't be messed with. I can, I've zeroed my DRO, zero, 00 here at the center hole, which is the center of the axis of the eccentric. So now I can just, with this all clamped down and these fastened securely, I can come out here two and five sixteenths of an inch and put my eighth inch hole, um, you know, center drill it and drill it and ream it there for the fit into the chassis. So hope that makes sense. Okay, and here we just laid out and drilled out the first, drilled and reamed the first eighth inch hole in one of the straps. I'll do the second one now and I can take it apart and shape it. Here's the second one, got it all clamped down nicely, little center drill, stop, and I'll switch out the uh, undersized drill and the reamer. Okay, so here's what I got them, I wanted to not silver solder them just yet. You can see I've, ta I've taken them apart and I've just used my little, one of my little layout templates and laid out, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the shape for the rod ends here. And uh, I just put a fresh belt on my grinder, fresh 80 grit, so I'll start shaping those tomorrow and hopefully get them silver soldered. I'll screw them, I'll put the, I cleaned off all the crazy glue using some acetate and um, got them all clean. Then, uh, and I, I did the insides of the eccentric straps as well. And so tomorrow, after I get done shaping, I'll clean these things all up prepare them for the silver solder and put some flux and solder and I can screw them back into position, hold them, hold them in place and the silver solder will do its job to kind of make them look warm. Okay, here we are on Thursday night now. I've uh, shaped the rod ends, kept it simple, just shaped them into a little, you know, straight taper with a round at the end. And I've cleaned them. I filed off any of the scale that was on the black steel. And you might be able to detect that I've put some flux there, kind of clear flux that looks like Vaseline. And then a piece of the silver solder, a little stick of it, is embedded in the flux on each side. And the flux coats all the way down. Put the screws in, but I didn't tighten them real tight. And so now I'm getting ready to heat it up melt that and I'll I'll heat from the basically like the inside of the ring so that the uh, flux will have a tendency to draw down draw the uh, solder into the space down into the uh, into the machine space on the eccentric straps all right here we are with the finished eccentrics polished them up a little bit with the Dremel uh, they feel very solid, so I'm pretty happy about that. We'll um, give them another test fit on the axle and make sure they fit into the valve actuating rods. And I'm thinking about using gun blue on them. I'm not quite sure they're going to be coated in oil in operation, but the gun blue would look good and protect them from rust a little bit. That steel part, anyway. We'll see. <laughs> To prepare for the Loctite, I just set this up to turn between the centers on the lathe, and I just used a file and only took a few passes to reduce the diameter there that was formerly a press on and now be a, a Loctite type fit. And I just used some sandpaper and some stuff to clean up the, the cap. This was, hasn't been worked on in 20, 25 years, maybe 30 years. Kind of cleaning it up, smoothing it up a little bit, and uh, filed the lip there a little bit so that everything would slide on and fit very nicely. All right, last.
last night I'm using a piece of quarter inch brass hex stock I made up some little fasteners that will be replaceable kind of a these they'll wear out I, I know that I'll, I'm gonna probably go ahead and make several spares but I did since I didn't heat treat the steel here you've got a steel part here and a steel clevis so this is not heat treated because I didn't want to risk ruining my silver solder joint here so I decided to make a brass screw it's um, the quarter inch head and then it's got a, a smooth shoulder of an eighth of an inch and then I tapped or uh, excuse me I threaded it 540 and for the clevis I clearance drilled and reamed an eighth inch hole on the inside and then I tapped the far side of the clevis for uh, five number 540 threads per inch and then I put a little nut on there as well for insurance. So I'm thinking that's a pretty good setup. We'll see. You know, as I said, I realize it's going to wear out over time. And here is, you know, the things do move. Clearance is tight on these things. But I'm pretty pleased with, with that the fact that everything seems to move. Obviously, it's not set like it needs to be. But at least it moves and, and you can see the uh, general idea with the eccentrics. One thing, uh, another thing of note, if the sharp-eyed viewer might notice that this eccentric strap is inverted. The, um, I don't know if it'll show up on here, but the little 080 heads, screw heads, actually interfere. They bump into the, the cam <laughs> over here. So I flipped just to see if it would, if other, if everything else was fine. I flipped it over, and sure enough, it's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart now, take that out, grind those heads down, and um, then I'll put it back together the correct way. So I got it apart. Here's the offending heads, as you can see. Kind of a shame to grind them down because it's going to be if I ever have to take them apart, which hopefully that'll never happen, but that'll be quite a chore. But off we go. And after a few seconds on the belt sander, you can see the got them nice and clean and very smooth and flat. Okay, you got everything back together. And the good news is that everything seems to work smoothly here. You'll notice I put some spacers in here. And uh, I didn't realize this before, but I'm going to have to machine off the insides of these little keepers um, for the axle boxes because they interfere with the the bottom of the eccentric so that's that's not a good thing but no big deal probably just machine uh, excuse me mill off about an eighth of an inch or so on the insides of both of them I put washers there just for clearance just so I could check everything else so very pleased with how how we're doing so far and um, I will keep you posted it's going to get real interesting here I'll start working on the cylinders and the steam chests and um, all that kind of stuff and then kind of connecting the dots so that I can get it running on air in the next few months. So thanks again everybody. I appreciate all the new subscribers. Um, thank you. If you have any questions, give me a, you know, let me know. I'll do my best to answer. Give me a thumbs up if you would please and I hope you have a great week.